Coming up in the Bahamas tonight, a new Bahamas Public Services Union industrial agreement means more benefits for members. After battling for more than 20 years, an environmental group wins a major court battle that will hopefully set dolphins free. We've got the details straight ahead. Coming up in the Bahamas tonight, construction on the government's housing program in Strawn Hills Estate nearing completion. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Everyday. Good evening, everyone. I'm Keish Latterly. And I'm Andrew Knowles. Thanks for joining us on The Bahamas Tonight. Topping the news this evening, a contract worth $200 million over five years was signed today between the government and the Bahamas Public Services Union in what President John Pinder says was record time. The five-year agreement makes a series of, includes rather a series of progressive provisions featuring a minimum wage increase. Our Cleopatra Murphy was there for the signing on behalf of more than 20,000 civil servants. An increase in minimum wage closure for workers owed hazardous pay, and an improved pension plan are what union members can look forward to after the Bahamas Public Services Union and the government signed a new industrial agreement Thursday. The five-year agreement took effect last year and expires in 2018, but this is the first year benefits are being paid. Union President John Pinder says, although it was a hard-fought battle, this was the shortest negotiation he has been involved in with the process lasting less than six months. For the union, Pinder says it was essential to secure an increase in minimum wage for nearly 2,000 members who fall into that bracket. Those who would have normally enjoyed a minimum wage of 10,700 now get to enjoy a minimum wage, minimum wage annually of 11,500, which is an $800 annual increase. My heart bleeds for some of my members, especially those from the environment health. Some of those guys drive the garbage trucks and the ones who are lowest, who have to pick up those garbage, they make the minimum wage. And they have the most physical labor, and they're at risk at all times, you know. And so I was glad that we were able to at least get that accomplished so far. As part of the new agreement, BPSU members will receive a lump sum increment in August and another in 2017-2018, in addition to a double increment in 2016-17. Pinder says it also calls for the formation of a promotional committee that allows for a more transparent process when it comes to promotions and fairness when it comes to Grand Bahama and Family Island members. Lead negotiator for the government, Keith Archer, also says a disturbance allowance has been added. The disturbance is $200 more a month in addition to the rent. So we have $700 for rent in, in um, Nassau is now... A thousand, and in the family islands, no, no province is six. The family islands, that'll be nine, and the family islands now be a thousand. Minister of State for Finance, the Honorable Michael Halkidis, thanks union executives for arriving at a workable agreement with government despite challenging financial times. And I should also like to take this opportunity to express the government's sincere appreciation to the hard-working twenty thousand plus public servants that give outstanding service each and every day to the citizens of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. While no side in any negotiation achieves everything it sets out to, we are all grateful for the level of cooperation that has resulted in this document that both sides can live with. With the contract now signed, Pinder says he is pleased with the agreement and the speed in which negotiations were completed. Cleopatra Murphy, ZNS Network News. Environmentalists scored a major win in the courts today after waging a decades-long battle to free sea animals in captivity. Fern Carey tells us tonight that the court's decision could mean a game change for aquatic attractions. Environmentalists Sam Duncombe and Sonia Alvino got exactly what they were hoping for Thursday when the court ruled in their favor, paving the way for a number of dolphins to be freed from captivity. The group had asked the court, among other things, to quash a decision to grant dolphin import licenses to Blue Illusions, which operates a marine mammal facility at Blackbeard's Key, and had requested an order to have the dolphins removed from the facility. 
In his written ruling, Justice Stephen Isaacs found, among other things, that the company had not and could not have been granted a premises license and site plan approval. Tong Kum spoke with reporters outside court. We are absolutely thrilled that the judge has basically looked at all the work that we did over the last year, for Blackbeard's Key in particular, and has seen the merit in our argument why these animals should not be in captivity um, and that the government cannot circumvent its own laws. There is not one facility in this country that is up to par. So in actual fact, they should all really start closing down. Duncan believes the ruling could have significant implications for other dolphin facilities throughout the country. Our petition has over 95,000 signatures on it against this facility and any new facilities. And it also asks for the facilities that are in existence today to stop breeding their animals and to start looking toward a tiered closure of all of the facilities that exist. Re-Earth member Sonia Alvino also believes a Freedom of Information Act is necessary in order to settle such matters more quickly. This is huge for us and for the country. It took us a heck of a lot of digging, asking questions, continually writing, writing, writing to government officials in order to get information and we were denied information which forced us into the courts. So we're thrilled that we got um, a, a win for us and a win for the dolphins. Now before anything can be done to improve the lot of these dolphins, Ray Earth will first have to wait to see if the other side will appeal and that could take up to six weeks. Vern Carey, ZNS Network News. The government hopes that by this fall, homes in the Strawns Hills East Estate subdivisions will be occupied. The new homes in the government housing subdivision off Fire Trail Road are nearly complete. Meantime, the government's housing program has suffered many setbacks, which have since been corrected with 23 contracts awarded two months ago to restart the work. Our Charisma Robinson has this update from the housing minister about the triumphs and challenges of providing affordable housing for Bahamians. The Ministry of Housing moving swiftly ahead to get 20 homes in Strawn Hills Estate completed and available for potential homeowners. My department has begun the process of, uh, well, completing the process of assignments and, and, more, and the banks are reviewing those persons who will occupy the homes. And so I'm hoping that uh, my timeline is for August and I hope that they meet the time frame for us to have uh, persons in there before uh, September. Last June, the Ministry of Finance signed a 100 $160 million memorandum of understanding with the National Insurance Board and the Bahamas Mortgage Corporation for the National Housing Program. However, the program suffered many delays as a result of the BMC and the government working to fulfill the stipulations in the MOU. But as home seekers continue to wait in line to occupy this subdivision in southwestern New Providence, Housing Minister Kendra Dorsett is appealing to its current homeowners who are experiencing financial challenges to settle their accounts with the mortgage corporation as soon as possible. He says delinquency numbers are still too high. The last thing we want to do is find ourselves in a position where we are putting people uh, out of their homes. But BMC has the, the, the mandate as given by me to work with our customers. Customers. And the one message we want to continue to get out to people, please don't wait until it's too late. Come into the mortgage corporation. If you're falling on hard times, if things are rough, please come into us and let's see whether we can either restructure your facility or at least put in place a plan where you won't find yourself jeopardizing your investment in your home. Minister Dorsey confirming the mortgage delinquency rate was around 38 percent when he came into office. And since then, he admits that number has fluctuated. It is too high. Um, and so we think that uh, with the new dispensation of really getting to know our customers and working with them, hopefully in the fullness of time we will reduce that, um, that level of delinquency. But the, the vast majority of the challenges that we, that we face are with those persons who would have had loans and may have lost uh, 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 jobs um, you know, within the last uh, 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 five to ten years and who are experiencing challenges. Um, but we're working through it. Meantime, as construction on the government's housing program on Grand Bahama begins soon, new homes will also be built in Fire Trail Subdivision and Roma Street, Fox Hill here in New Providence, when the second portion of funds are received by the National Insurance Board for the housing program. Charisma Robinson, ZNS Network News. 
Cases of sexual and physical abuse and neglect continue to rise in the country and officials are now calling the state of affairs alarming. Today, officials at the Department of Social Services revealed numbers they say don't reflect the true picture of child abuse in the country, as many matters still go unreported. During this January 20th, June January 20th to June, the department recorded 142 cases. For the same period this year, that number has jumped to 185. Um, for the same period last year, for physical abuse cases, we had 33 up to June. And for 2014, we have recorded 52. And for sexual abuse, for 2013, we had 20 cases of reported sexual abuse. And for 2014, now, we have 33. Um, for incest, we had um, one case in 2013, and we know also that that's not so. This year, we have five cases reported. Now, neglect, which is the highest um, level of abuse that we have experienced in the Bahamas, we had... Two th we had um, 84 in 2013 and 2014 we um, now have 87. Now, key components of the offensive against abuse are promoting awareness through education and appealing to Bahamians to report abuse. Even if you give us the name, we do not call your name during investigation. That's kept confidential. Mm -hmm. So we encourage the public to please, you know, come and let us know what maltreatment of children are being done. Another factor that um, can contribute to persons reporting more or the numbers being higher is um, the fact that a lot of persons may not be aware of what really constitutes <coughs> abuse. Um, and through the education that we give them, then, you know, they, they recognize what constitutes abuse. For instance, the verbal abuse. Well, still ahead tonight, businesses count the cost of becoming more disabled friendly. And a friendly greeting after some tense moments between the U.S. and Bahamas. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight. This segment of the news is brought to you by Shell Quality Fuels. 